Hey there, I'm Mr. Terry. I'm a high school history teacher. Welcome back to another History Teacher Reacts video. All right, today I'm checking out a channel that I've never covered. However, it's been recommended and I see it in suggested feeds all the time. And that channel is Legal Eagle. Now, recently they did a video that kind of caught my attention because it might have some historical relevance because it's titled, Can Texas Really Secede from the Union? So I'm interested to see if they add some Texas history in here because this is not a new thing. So I'm interested to see what this channel does. Now, the original video will be linked below. I know it's a massive channel, but please support the original content creator. And if there's more, especially historically relevant videos that they've done, make sure to give me those suggestions specifically in my Discord server. All right, let's get started. All right, so this is it. Is this the, the legal eagle, this Jim Halpert looking guy? All right, here we go. America, we need to talk. We've okay. grown apart these last few years. It's not you, it's m Mississippi. It's Mississippi. <laughs> Pew Research reports oh, no. that over the past seven years, Americans have increasingly felt that their political opposites are stupider, more dishonest, more immoral, and lazier. And the simple fact is, they're right, regardless of what side they're on. I'm playing both sides so that I always come out on top. Always sunny. And in light of this increasing Great show. acrimony among Americans, some have begun to think it was good while it lasted, but it's time to call it quits on this whole union thing. For example, Ooh. Texas Governor Greg Abbott has declared a crisis at the border and says that Texas has a right to self-defense and is going to take over immigration duties from the U.S. government and stop the U.S. government from interfering. And it's many politicians been, agree. Like Republicans, It's kind of been interesting to see... Yeah, I guess with, with Texas, kind of what's going on, you know, with, with the border, so many people crossing the border. And it's really been this interesting thing of seeing state versus federal conflicts again, right? But, I mean, is this going to be one of those things? It was like the Civil War where it's like states' rights. Now it's not states' rights to, you know, slavery like it used to. But now is it going to be like other arguments like states' rights to you know, defend themselves or, you know, enact their own uh, state national guard, you know, that kind of thing. Is that is that what's brewing here for the next civil war? I don't know. I don't want to be a, a, a doomsday, a doomer here. <laughs> All right, we got MGT. Representative Marjorie Taylor Greene, who triggered a firestorm of criticism by repeatedly demanding a national divorce in which Red America and Blue America go their separate ways. And we should listen to Congressperson Greene because she knows from experience what it means when someone decides they can't stand you anymore and unceremoniously leaves Ooh. you. But while Greene was pilloried on all sides <laughs> for her call. Now, I have no idea what this guy's background is. I'm assuming he's a lawyer, right? Is he a lawyer? I'm assuming that the channel's all about legal issues, probably like current legal issues. Um, I don't know what he does historically, though, or like what political biases there are or are shown. Uh, maybe you guys can help with that down in the comments. So I'm just taking it for what it is. For splitting up the union, a March 2023 poll suggests that around one fifth of the population or 66 million Americans, if you can extrapolate from that, are amenable to a national divorce. Looks like the 250 year itch is real. And even soon. So if it was a split, what are they saying? Like it would look like it'd be like this bicoastal state of like democrat states on the west coast because it's and then on the east coast and they're like it'd be like india it'd, or it'd be like pakistan when india you know was created they're like hey we're going to create a home for muslims and we're going to create a home for hindus right and they're like okay we'll have this country in the west a west pakistan and that's for indian muslims then we're going to make this east pakistan okay this east pakistan and that will also be a home and you can go wherever it is you want but let's not forget that like that partition if we're trying to, you know, uh, make a comparison here, led to the death of probably a million people. It was incredibly violent. And really what it did was just created um, a refugee crisis. Because it's not like if you were to create something like this today, there'd be some like for uh, national exchange program where it's like, all right, you're a Democrat living in a red state and you're um, a Republican living in a blue state. Let's match you up and we'll just trade lives. You'll trade each other's houses, trade each other's, you know, uh, maybe lines of work like that would never happen. Right. Um, so we've seen this whole thing where it's like we'll split and then everyone can kind of be happy. And historically, it, it doesn't work. In fact, it ends up being brutal. So Rand Nikki Haley can, is on tape you know. claiming the Constitution allows anyway. states to secede. Do you believe the states of the United States have the right to secede? From the I think that they do. I mean, the Constitution says that. And admittedly, these numbers are alarming, though it's uh, clear to no. what extent it reflects a sincere desire to break up the union as opposed Not to in the way that you're probably saying it. displeasure that the person you didn't vote for became president. 
Uh, but in 2009, governor of Texas and king of failing upwards, Rick Perry, jokingly suggested his state would consider secession after the election of Barack Obama. But this isn't just mm -hmm. a red state thing. In 2017, a poll found that 32% of California voters supported seceding from the US following the election of Donald Trump, up from 20% in 2014. And again, after Joe Biden was elected, Texas is once again partying like it's 1861 by refusing to accept election results and threatening secession. Regardless, what was once unthinkable, the breakup of the United States. Interesting to see if he goes into what the what the what the law states about secession because it may not be a lot of what people think. Has become a real issue we can no longer treat as a mere hypothetical. Hmm. Wasn't he cut off Florida? Yeah. I always wonder with this like okay, I mean obviously it's just Florida. But like, couldn't have Bugs Bunny not not included the Panhandle and just cut that, and then you like rename the other state because the Panhandle of Florida is very different than, uh, you know, down south in Miami or Orlando or something like that. So, uh, I forget the context of that. <laughs> what happened in that Looney Tunes, by the way? <laughs> so today, Legal Eaglets, let's talk about what would happen if states opted to formally leave the union and whether that's legally possible. Now, typically, it's a mistake to treat cranks with any kind of serious inquiry. It's going hard on her, so. ...is not exactly what one would call a constitutional scholar. I know a lot of people do. But her proposal is not without precedent. After all, the United States of America was born out of secession. And ever since the colonists declared themselves an independent nation, sure. threats to leave the union have long been made by various constituents but, of the U.S., but rarely acted on. And it, but still, I mean, it, we've seen this historically, too. Just because we declare independence doesn't mean you're going to be independent. Um, you may have to fight for it, like, like the Americans did um, with, uh, with, with Britain. It's not like they signed the Declaration of Independence, sent it the king of, you know, <laughs> uh, of England, and he was like, oh, crap. Like, I'm reading this thing. It they're independent now i guess that's it like no you're still gonna have another hurdle to jump which is the people you're seceding from are they going to accept it and are they going to willing to fight or do something in fact the first them? serious threat of secession came not from the deep south but from new england in 1814 new england delegates attended the hartford convention to protest president james madison's mercantile policies and the war of 1812 with more extreme delegates making an unsuccessful push to leave the union yeah and that was an interesting started. side note in history that i didn't learn about until my adulthood about this like brief stint where they were trying to do that yeah, uh, I bet a lot of you didn't know that. If you've heard this one already, after the election of Abraham Nothing Lincoln in 1860, it, but... 11 southern U.S. states broke off from the republic to form the Confederate States of America, triggering a bloody four-year civil war. And of course, despite modern attempts by some to claim the Confederacy was fighting for states' rights, not slavery, we know that that's pretty much false. How do we know? Well, for one, the majority of the states explicitly wrote in their declarations of secession that the reason they seceded was to preserve slavery and prevent political equality between whites and blacks. Literally in the secession documents, of those countries that slavery was the issue i know you know I, I have a lot of people that are you know believe that it's you know more complicated than that that there were other issues i'm sure there's other issues um but also people that that hold uh, hold true i see them in the comments you know that hold true to the that it was not about slavery at all you know what i mean so if you guys want to argue about that you can argue amongst yourselves <laughs> uh down in the comments i'm not going to do it but, you know, sometimes people are only textualists when it's convenient. But even cities have gotten on the secession bandwagon, or in this case, perhaps the secession yacht. Martha's Vineyard, along with Nantucket, actually voted to secede from Massachusetts. Yes, in 1977, the Martha's Vineyard selectmen voted 10 to 2 the for great. secession to protest a redistricting <laughs> plan that would reduce their representation in the state legislature. And then begin the great Martha's Vineyard empire would start from this. <laughs> a bunch of wine moms, you know, I don't know if they're just going to be totally just a wine mom Karen's running an empire. I don't uh, know. <laughs> on an even smaller level, some Americans have simply proclaimed their property to be an independent micronation. For example, in 1998, Kevin Baugh declared his micronations are hilarious. property in the Nevada desert to be the Republic of Malaysia. And since 1998, President Baugh has ruled his micronation. I love, as a I love these dictator. stories. I am President Kevin Baugh of the Republic of Malaysia, a tiny self-declared country. These are so Nevada. fun. These are just fun. That's within the United States. We have everything that a nation should have. Bank. Stamp. A seat, a seat at the Today, UN. No country is <laughs> um, one of my favorites is Sealand. <laughs> you heard of that? Some dude like just claimed like an, 
like an oil <laughs> barrack. <laughs> and it's been like that, I think, for decades. And you could sail out there and you can get like a, know, like a postal system. It's kind of funny. It's just like a dude and his family out on an oil rig. The legitimacy of this micronation, whose currency is tied to the price of cookie dough. Now, obviously, if you're going to try and secede from the union, you're going to need a good lawyer. But if you want a great lawyer, my firm, the Eagle Team, can help. If you've suffered a data breach, especially oh, he is legit. a data breach letter, a law firm, or were involved huh? in a car crash, or have dealt with sexual harassment, we can represent you or help find you the right attorney who can. It's so important. What do you think it makes more right off of? So you can get the best his legal firm? or the videos because all his videos i just look at aren't they all just click on the link in the description for a free consultation is that him because you don't just need a legal jim halpert esquire legal click on the link below so let's jump right into it does the constitution provide a right to unilaterally secede from the union well to give everyone's favorite answer it depend no actually no uh states and localities have zero constitutional right to declare themselves independent and break away from but, the United states but any votes to secede unilaterally is just political virtue signaling and uh with zero legal effect yeah that's what i was gonna say well i was gonna say that it's not like people that secede care about that it's not like they're like oh we can't secede because this constitution we no longer trust or believe in says that we can't like nobody that ever secedes did that did the americans have the right lawful right to secede from the British Empire? Well, no, <laughs> right? But nobody cares when they're doing that. So really, it doesn't and matter. The, quote, constitutional right to secede is a myth that refuses to die, but for really interesting reasons. Uh, now, no state has bought into this mythical right to secede more than the Lone Star State. Uh, in real. fact, Texans love to all the, time. the legend that Texas, as a condition to joining the U.S., negotiated an annexation treaty which grants them the unique right to unilaterally secede from the Union and once again become the Republic of Texas. But now, if you're one that has believed that, that like, <laughs> you can legally secede, what what are you pointing to as evidence of that? Like like actual evidence, not what you heard on a blog or TikTok video, but like what legal precedent are people pointing to for a legal secession? Because I don't I don't know it. Uh, teach me. <laughs> you might be surprised to learn that the terms of the Texas annexation contain no such provision. But Texas won't be cowed by your big city fact checking and literacy. Uh, you know, as a result, these state's conservative leaders continue to falsely proclaim. Dude, he's harsh on. Okay, uh, I can see. Texas he's not like the the right. Is he? By adding to its party platform that Texas retains the right to secede from the United States, declaring a right to nullify the federal laws. They don't. He, like he adds the extra amendment and jabs, urging the Texas legislature to pass a <laughs> referendum to determine whether or not the state of Texas should reassert its status as an independent nation. And in March of 2023, Texas State Representative Brian Slayton introduced a bill to put said referendum on the November 2023 ballot. And just in time for the 2024 election, the Texas Supreme Court declined to take a case <laughs> from a conservative <laughs> group that wanted to add Texas that is a good name, though. to this year's presidential primary ballot. But that raises right. the question, on what legal grounds do some Texans claim the state has a right to secede? Well, according to Daniel Miller, the president of the pro okay, yeah, this is what I was asking, nationalist I movement, Texas has an implied right to secede because the Constitution doesn't say it can't. Uh, Article 1, Section 10 of the U.S. Constitution lists everything states are forbidden from doing. Guess what's not in there? Withdrawing. <laughs> in addition, So does that mean they're appealing like to the Ninth Amendment? The Ninth Amendment basically is going to state that um, just because something isn't in the Constitution doesn't mean it can't be a law or something. That there, Or there, there are rights that the Constitution uh, may not specifically, you know, uh, um, you know, state, but that kind of builds off then the Tenth Amendment, where it's like, well, what, like, what do you do with those issues? Well, Tenth Amendment says it goes to the states; and they can decide on it. So, I was wondering if that might be an appeal. Miller claims that the Tenth Amendment, which says that the federal government only has power spelled out in the Constitution or not delegated by the states, means that states can choose to leave. Now, this argument isn't completely insane. There is a canon of construction that allows you to interpret contracts or statutes uh, by what is included. Specifically, it's uh, based on the Latin phrase is justum generis, which means the company it keeps. If you create a list of things and something is not included in that list, then you can assume that it was not meant to be included in that list. That being said, the argument couldn't is say also we similar to the one used in the movie Air Bud. Uh, Air Bud? Basically, there's nothing in the Constitution that says you can't the secede from the United movie? States or that a dog can play basketball. Greatest of all time. You won't find anything in there that says a dog can't play. He's right. Ain't no rules that the dog can't play basketball. <laughs> so I wouldn't necessarily... <laughs> what if they use that as legal precedent? I'd like to bring it up. <laughs> uh, referees ver or team whatever versus Airbud argument. 
as precedent. <laughs> I'd really hang my hat on that argument. Most likely, Airbud would be able to secede before Texas. Especially because legal scholars and constitutional experts seem to overwhelmingly agree that the US Constitution does not allow for secession. For example, Stanford Levison, who is a law professor at the University of Texas, Austin, said that, quote, almost no lawyer would take that argument seriously. I do believe it is viewed as a closed question. Oh, you know some would. Courts come on. Weighed in on There's, this. Come on. There's some lawyers out there that somehow passed the bar in some weird shady way some conspiracist that somehow got a law degree come on they would take it up just to just to just to give themselves notoriety right views of secession have always shot them down in 2010 alaska's supreme court ruled that secession was illegal and thus an initiative putting the question to a vote could not be placed on the ballot so any effort to put a matter on the ballot in texas would likely not be constitutional either even the late supreme court justice antonin scalia who followed a strict form of constitutional interpretation dubbed originalism said that there's no legal uh, basis for Supreme secession. Court shut and we learned down. Scalia's views on it would this go to the in Supreme a quite Court unusual way. Back in 2006, legally minded screenwriter Daniel Turkowitz wrote a letter to all nine Supreme Court justices for advice on a farcical script he was writing in which uh, Maine secedes from the U.S. and joins Canada, leading to a climactic showdown. Wait, wait, who does what? to all nine Supreme Court justices for advice on a farcical script he was writing in which uh, Maine secedes from the U.S. and joins Canada, leading to a climactic Maine. showdown at the Supreme Court. I feel like if Maine did it, like, nobody would notice. <laughs> nobody would notice. When do you ever hear anything from Maine? Sorry, Mainers. I've never met anybody from Maine. I never hear news coming out of Maine. Only time I ever hear, I guess I should say, hear about me is presidential elections because they're one of the uh, only states. Are they the only state that splits their alert that will split their electoral vote? It's the only time I ever hear about me. Court. Scalia was the only justice to provide a substantive response to Turkowitz, and the late justice was unequivocal. Quote, to begin with, the answer is clear. If there was any constitutional issue resolved by the Civil War, it is that there is no right to secede. <laughs> well. Hence, in the Pledge of Allegiance, one nation indivisible. The justice also explained why a secession... Pledge of Allegiance is not legal precedent. Uh, but... Uh, going back to what he said there, let me go back to the uh, the thing. You know, w was this constitutional issue resolved by the Civil War? I mean, not really. I mean, I don't, not really. I mean, no, is it you know, the Supreme Court saying this, but like it still took a war. You know what I mean? Indeed. Hence, in the Pledge of Allegiance, one nation indivisible. The justice also explained why a secession case would never end up before the Supreme Court. Quote, I find it difficult to envision who the parties to this lawsuit might be. Is the state suing the United States for a declaratory judgment? But the United States cannot be sued without its consent, and it has not consented to this sort of suit. Mm. I am sure that poetic license can overcome all that, but you do not need legal advice for that. Good luck with your screenplay. And although the Supreme Court has right. never heard a direct secession case, it did address the question indirectly in 1869, and once again, it involves Texas. Uh, the Supreme Court case of Texas versus White. 1869, context, Civil War is over. It's been over for about four years. Texas, what? pissed that they were on the losing side and they're like we want out even though it just fought the, the cash strap state selling u.s treasury bonds to help finance its war with the union a brokerage firm purchased some of these bonds and then resold them to investors and after the south's defeat the union supported reconstruction government of texas filed suit against the brokerage firm directly with the supreme court as the constitution confers original jurisdiction to the top court for cases in which a state is a party and texas argued that the rebel government had illegally sold these bonds and the state was therefore entitled for their return and or repayment the brokerage firm argued that these sales were legal and it had no duty to repay Texas. And in a 5-3 to three ruling, the Supreme Court ruled that the Confederate state's sale was illegal because Texas's secession itself was illegal. And as a matter of law, it never happened. Writing for the majority of the court, Chief Justice okay. and Secret Grizzly Bear Sam and Chase, who once famously graced the face of the now defunct $10,000 bill, <laughs> declared, quote, uh, the union between... Are we, we going to get to an inflation point, though? We're going to have to start making these bills. All right, new bills are being made. Who deserves to be on it? All right. Are we getting away? Because if we're going to like Harriet Tubman, you know, like it was supposed to be the thing after uh, Andrew Jackson. Um, I guess we got Ben Franklin, right? But <clears throat> who's going on the next one? Is it Taylor Swift or what? Grace, the face of the now defunct $10,000 bill declared, quote, uh, the union between Texas and the other states was as complete, as perpetual, and as indissoluble as the union between the original states. There was no place for reconsideration or revocation, except through revolution or through the consent of the states. Well, I good research in this so video. I've been Court impressed with spoken. that. There are only two paths to secession. For again, first revolution time I've seen this 
or a consensual dissolution. Now, before you go thinking that declaring war against the United States is just this one weird trick that allows you to secede or uh, governments hate it because it's so successful, I should know yeah. that waging war against the government is not legal. Uh, it's what we lawyer types would call treason, a crime that is punishable by death. But again, it doesn't matter. If you win, it doesn't matter. That's, that's, that's how history works. Of course, nobody is gonna put in their laws, it's legal to fight you know, that country. This is where laws are just nothing on, but something on a paper that way, right? And, uh, hashtag not legal advice, don't commit treason. <laughs> uh, also, seceding Treason's by force, illegal. Uh, even unsuccessfully, or especially unsuccessfully, will <laughs> typically result in a high body count. And during the Civil War, about 620,000 people, or 2% of the nation's total population, were killed. So unless you're jazzing to Ooh. murder... Uh, thousands, if not millions, of your friends and neighbors. By the way, imagine if the Civil War happened 50 years later and you had the technology of, like, World War One. Now, Civil War technology was already getting pretty advanced, a lot better, um, uh, like, rifles, for example, kind of getting away from the old muskets and now getting into rifles, but it would have had that kind of deadliness. Um, that number would have gone way higher. Now, understand, too, back in those days, too, actually, maybe this would combat it, but... Um, in civil war in the civil war it was still an era where they were still getting uh uh they're still very new when it comes to like medical treatment um because pretty much up at least until the civil war you know most people died by infections that came from battle so you get shot it doesn't sound a fatal wound but you're probably going to die anyways because it's going to get infected right so one thing the dust revolution did was helped with um with with uh treatments of that and you start getting antibiotics and and and, and that kind of thing but um uh, and ways to treat it, I, I should just say in general. But anyway, I, I was just thinking that just came to my mind right now. You, had, you saw that number of like 620,000. How much more devastating if it was an era where you had like machine guns and gas and all that stuff, man, that'd be crazy. I uh, spend decades in prison for sedition or get executed for treason. Revolution is probably not the ideal secession path. In fairness, that would be the most Texas thing that you could do. <laughs> Uh, but there is one uh -huh. way to secede without uh -huh. murdering a whole bunch of people. The states They're and great the federal state. government consent to the best your state. secession. Now, of course, some states already act like their own independent nations and have the wealth to back that up. Uh, if California and Texas were their own countries, they would be the fifth and tenth largest economies in the world yeah. by GDP, respectively. Massive. And if one state leaves, it's easy. That it brings into question, would a country without... Okay, let's say they go to the bicoastal, right? East Coast, West Coast, most all well, Northeast at least, a lot of that. I don't know what you do about swing states like Florida or something, but um, could <coughs> how how would those countries fare without the economies of the other? Would it just turn into now like, I mean, maybe not go to like a third world country when it comes to the economy, but definitely would be the same, right? Easy to imagine the domino effect of mass exodus of not if you're realistic of states. So what would a consensual breakup between one or more states look like? That's well, in a, a December question. 2022 article for the New Republic, Bryn Tannehill, a former naval aviator and a senior defense analyst, gamed out what a divided United States of America might actually look like. Oh, I like this. Piece, we got some alternate history. Has Alternate History Hub done this before? This seems like something Cody and his crew would do. Goes for what she referred to as a soft secession and hard secession, uh, which he described as akin to a separation versus a messy divorce, respectively. In Tannehill's view, Amicable a soft review. secession. Wait, wait, wait. Did it, does it say John Krasinski? A separation versus a messy. Is this John Krasinski or Ryan Ruth? All right. I mean, I assumed that I wasn't the first one to call him Jim Halpert, played by John Krasinski. I know. But <clears throat> I at least wanted to think that for a little bit longer than going 12 minutes into a video and being. Have that stripped away from me. Divorce, respectively. In Tannehill's view, a soft secession could look like the 56 nation British Commonwealth, where nations like New Zealand, Canada, and Australia technically owe allegiance to the crown, but in practice, British they're Commonwealth, all their own black. sovereign nations, and the monarch's role Sorry, is entirely Britain. ceremonial. Uh, the U.S. doesn't have to swear allegiance to the crown because we're dope and we do dope things. But she also <laughs> cited as an example the Kurds in America. northern Iraq. And that while technically part of Iraq, the Iraqi government exercises little control and the Kurds have their own armed forces that cooperate in anti-terror operations against ISIS. Uh, though that hasn't exactly worked out especially well for the Kurds historically. Man, the Kurd story is so interesting. And I got to learn more about Kurdish history, but how, like... It wasn't even on the discussion table about, you know, like they did Sykes-Picot after World War um, 
after World War One, and then with the mandates and all that stuff, and they're starting to draw up, you know, Palestine and Syria and all that. You have this, you know, Kurdish group that when like Sykes Picot happened, completely divided up the whole Kurdish people, get separated. How many countries are the the Kurdish homeland? You know, like in is like Turkey and Iraq and like Syria, or whatever. Um, that group of people has been just like completely ignored with all of the um, changing of borders and stuff, you know, largely at the hands of Europeans, of course. But the idea of a soft secession has its supporters on the conservative, albeit never Trump side of the aisle, like former National Review columnist David French. French argued that uh, different states and different regions should be empowered to go about American life in a radically different way without federal intervention. So in practice, this would look like a beefed up version of federalism, which French describes as uh, tolerance through self-governance and community autonomy. In the system, more power would okay. be delegated to the states, while the federal mm -hmm. government takes a hands-off approach to let the laboratories of democracy start their own paths. So in theory, this type of soft secession would have the benefit of preserving the union and America's global power in a troubled world, while leaving open the possibility of reconciliation. You think it'd be more likely, though, to actually have like a secessions of war thing or do maybe more like Canada does, where in Canada, if you know, provinces have a lot of power. Um, the national government of Canada compared to the United States is the harmless and weak and completely weak. You know, uh, the provinces almost in a lot of ways rule like their own countries. And um, it seems like Canadians like it that way, at least from what I understand. Um, but if that would be more of a, a thing is, um, you know, with federalism, having this balance between state power and, and national power, uh, are we going to, is it more likely that we see a shift? A lot of that would have to come from the Supreme Court. What the Supreme Court would have to do, I guess, is kind of like with Roe v. Wade, strike down a whole bunch of um, uh, probably court cases that ended up putting certain things into pretty much national law, I guess you would say and uh, delegate more to the states. It'd probably have to happen with that, with the Supreme Court to start that way and to give more power to the states. But that would also require Americans tolerating policies without a federal floor of rights and or protections that many would find detestable and unacceptable, including dissenting citizens within said states. Especially if you're a small state. If you're a big state like California, Texas, then you're going to be more likely to be like, yeah, we can do it on our own and we don't need to worry about national government protecting us. But remember, you know, the Bill of Rights wasn't supposed to be a part of the Constitution. It was the small states, you know, like a Rhode Island that would refuse to ratify it unless there was protection on a national level that uh, they wouldn't get bullied by, you know, the big states, right? Tannehill and I think we're all grateful for the Bill of Rights that it, you know, went into, uh, basically got attached to the Constitution. I think we're all good with that. Maybe not. You know, the argument against it back in that day was like, you don't need it. We'll just let the states deal with it. But like small states just didn't like that idea of big states being so powerful. Hard secession is a more dangerous proposition. Quote, this would involve a clean break. No more ostensible allegiance to a government in Washington, simply regions breaking off and forming their own countries based on common culture, religion, ethnicity, and regional identity. According to Tannehill, a hard secession could take many forms. It could be like the outcome of the fall of the Soviet Union in 1991, which triggered an economic collapse and yeah. a huge decrease in life that. expectancy, not to don't mention the that. matter of nuclear... Well, nuclear what I mean by that is we don't want the collapse that happened as a result of the, the economic crisis that happened in Russia in a lot of ways still from that uh, <laughs> uh, not very great transfer of, you know... I mean, you're going from communism to some kind of capitalist structure, but trying to then transfer like okay where's all the means of production go and all that stuff and what happens you know with russia is pretty much that goes in the hand of a very few small oligarchs who pretty much run the country now so you had the state-run enterprise handed over not necessarily to the majority of people but the handful of you know powerful oligarchs that uh really tie themselves now into russian politics and pull out of the strings across successor states a Tannehill also cites to the fall of Yugoslavia in the 90s, which resulted in a decade of civil war and Oof, genocide. And that was brutal. Uh, like Taiwan and China, wars. a decades-long, cold, armed standoff. But apart from the legality or illegality of the whole situation, a national divorce, even a consensual one, would be an absolute bureaucratic nightmare with a ton of unanswered questions. Like, how would the national debt be divided? Uh, what happens <laughs> to all the money paid into federal programs like Social Security and Medicare for those leaving the U.S.? What do we do with federal assets like the gold fort at Fort Knox or the U.S. military bases? And for that matter, what happens to the U.S. military itself and the nukes? Uh, dibs on the nukes. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm sure this will work out just Here's fine. the thing, though. Do you think those people that are doing the secession propositions have thought about any of that stuff? Like 
any of it? Is it just this fantastic idea of what it would be like and not looking at the logistics at all? That's kind of what I feel. In short, like. yes, theoretically, you could break uh, up the United States shouldn't. through mutual consent, but only at great personal, economic, and political costs. There are just so many complicated issues to resolve, even with a mutual separation, not to mention that America's standing in the world would immediately and permanently be diminished. And even if the initial separation were peaceful, which True. I kind of doubt, uh, there would be years of disputes from trade and redrawing borders. And as history has shown regarding boundary disputes, uh, there's no guarantee that we wouldn't break out into an all out bloody second civil war. So I know we've all been fussing. It happens and feuding, everywhere, every let's continent. Just take a breath and remember as Americans, we have more in common than what divides us and find a way to work through our issues together. Yeah. At least until the kids go to college. And it looks like a frightening number of states are going Sumter? along with the plan to give the middle finger to the federal government. That Fort didn't Sumter? work out so well last time. So where, Marjorie... where would the new Fort Sumter take place? What do you think? If it was in, uh, <coughs> if it was in Texas, <laughs> the Alamo again, they resurrect the Alamo. It's going to be in San Antonio. Stop trying to make secession happen. It's not going to happen. Instead, let's just all take a breath and remember, as Americans, we have more in common than divides us and find a way to work through our issues together. Is it, is it too harsh for me to say that people need to realize that usually we have, you know, when we have these issues, it's not as bad as it seems. Is that naive of me to say? But like, look around the world and all of the struggles politically and economically around the world. Is it is it that bad right now? I don't know. Until the kids go to college. And if you're Until looking to send your kids to college, you'll probably need to find ways to manage your finances and save money. Luckily, today's sponsor, Rocket Money, can hey. help. For reasons that I don't understand. What you have to do is jump to, um, if you want to watch their ad, but like put up the, there's probably like a coupon code or something. So put that in there because um, usually these, uh, you know, these ads, uh, they, the, 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 you know, doing these ads for people, um, coming through a, a commentary video like me, they don't they don't see anything from that unless it's from a coupon code and some some deals. Uh, they may not even get a piece of whatever they generate in revenue from this. So of $720 a year I played safe and do a little with bit over 500 million it, in canceled you know, subscriptions. Out, so to save more and spend less, join the over 5 million members using go. Rocket Money today. Go to rocketmoney.com slash legal eagle or click on the link in the description to get started for free. You can also unlock even more features with premium. Again, just click on the link that's on screen right now or down below to get started for free. And after that, click on this link over here for more Legal Eagle or I'll see you in court. Legal eagle. Okay. All right. So again, first time kind of seeing this channel in any kind of depth there. A uh, ton of ton of your research, um, obviously going into that, brought a ton of case law and different sources to to kind of dig out the whole again answer to the question: Can Texas really secede from the union? You can see there um, what's going on. So I was interested to see if there was like political biases, and he definitely put a lot of jabs. You could see on uh, kind of right wing pundits and stuff like that. But you know, um, it seems like they're you know pretty upfront with it, and I hope we're all mature enough to understand where those things are and try to look at the evidence, right? The evidence that they do not necessarily the tone of the discussion but the evidence present right but anyway i, I thought this was very interesting I, I i didn't know exactly the the question to this i knew that it was at very least going to be a very complicated thing to try to find legal precedent but not seeing it probably in the way that people that are secessionists probably saw it i was pretty pretty confident that there wasn't going to be a legal backing for that but anyway um, i'm interested to see more from this channel especially if there's some good stuff that I can interject some history. Hopefully that could be really useful where you can get kind of these modern legal, political, whatever, uh, um, discussions, and then I can come in and maybe add some historical stuff. I'd love to do that more. That's that's what I love doing. And if you're new to my channel, because you came over from legal legal, that's, that's what I do. I add historical context to, um, videos and stuff like that using just my long standing of you know being somebody with a history degree i've taught history at high school ap level for well over a decade now so just kind of using those experiences and just me you know doing videos almost daily i learn a lot all the time so just to be able to share with that but also bring in discussions i love to get discussions going and ask you guys questions all the time i love to get that you know feedback and discussion see those in the comments but anyways i'm rambling on here at the end so uh, again thank you for uh, those that have been promoting this uh, channel and suggesting it to me. And with that, we'll see y'all next time. Bye.